Are other card games even worth it to collect or invest? Let's chat about it. Well, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Uh, today on the channel, I wanna talk a little bit about Magic the Gathering, collecting, buying, trading, investing, uh, whatever you wanna call that, compared to other TCGs, other card games. Uh, we're talking Star Wars, Pokemon, we're talking uh, One Piece, we're talking Sorcery, all the games uh, that you guys know. We talk about a lot on the channel. Uh, we do talk about in the podcast on Friday mornings, May the Zoo be with you. It used to be whatever, and now it's a Magic the Gathering podcast where we talk about other things. This week, we're gonna be live at 9 a.m. for our 100th episode of season two. Uh, so make sure, I'll, I'll leave a link to that in the uh, in the comment section. Make sure you're, you're chalking along with us for that. Uh, but today I want to talk about should you be collecting these other card games? What, what should your reaction be to other TCGs if you are a Magic the Gathering fan, whether that be collector or even player or investor, that kind of world? Uh, this also would apply to stores. I think there's a lot of navigation there. So um, I am a huge fan of diversifying products, whether that be at the store or my own personal collection uh, or whatever. I am a huge, huge fan of that. And I want to start off by saying, not only am I a fan of that from a business perspective or an investment perspective or a money perspective, but I legitimately love collecting these other games. I love holding on to the cards. I love looking at the cards. I love playing a lot of the games. Um, and so I think that's a really important caveat that I want to hone in on. If you don't like a game, you should not collect it. You should not invest in it. You should not have anything to do with it, in my opinion. Now, there are people who just look at this strictly from a money, a monetary standpoint, but my heart on that, or my idea behind that, is that if something goes to zero, um, I want to at least be able to say that I enjoy it. Uh, Star Wars is a perfect example. I love the Star Wars game. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, and so if it goes to zero, I'm okay with having a couple of decks and having a, a couple collections of the showcases and holding on to them to say, hey, well, that was a fun time. Uh, and it's zero, it's worthless. Um, it's Sorcerer, another great example. I love the artwork. I love the gameplay. I really feel like the gameplay, you know, me and my wife have played some games. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, the investment and the, the risk is mitigated by the idea that I enjoy the process and I enjoy the thing at the end. Uh, so that's what I wanted to get that out of the way because I think that's really important. Um, but there is a lot of collection advantage if you diversify your inventory, if you diversify the things that you collect. And I've really found this in uh, in Pokemon uh, to be really, really uh, fruitful for me as a business and fruitful for me as a collector. Uh, the Pokemon that I've accumulated has grown in value quite significantly and it's been a lot of fun to collect. Um, so I want to get into that. First and foremost, uh, when you have these alternative TCGs, most of those alternative TCGs have a root in their collectability or their, their community in Magic the Gathering. The only one that this probably doesn't apply to very well is Pokemon, coincidentally. Uh, but most of the other games, I'm talking about Star Wars, uh, One Piece, I'm talking about um, you know Sorcery, a lot of those worlds of collecting and investing and playing all revolve back to Magic the Gathering. A lot of them have player bases and stuff in Magic the Gathering. So it creates this really interesting you know, dichotomy where you can trade cards, you can sell cards, you can navigate the world of the alternative TCG and allow it to interact with the card game that maybe you love in Magic the Gathering. There are things that you can do in order to trade cards or sell cards or whatever that can actually come back and help you in the Magic the Gathering world. So there's a lot of people, for instance, who would love to trade uh, their Magic the Gathering collections or their cards from Magic the Gathering that they don't play anymore. Or maybe it's a, a Gaius Cradle or an expensive card for some of the cards that they can't afford uh, in the Star Wars TCG. I see this all the time. People trade in stuff to the shop. Uh, people trading stuff on the Facebook groups. And so you can grow, you can get that card that you always wanted by being involved in these other card games. That kind of side of diversity, I think is really, really important. Um, and the other thing, uh, the bigger, kind of the biggest element of this is the increased risk 
that you attach yourself to by collecting those other games. So obviously Star Wars, Sorcery, all those games have an increased risk, One Piece, because the game doesn't have the 30 year long history that Magic the Gathering and Pokemon have. So with that increased risk comes an increased opportunity to make money as well. And so you have to calculate this, right? You can't just go all in. I, we've made this mistake on the channel in the past. We've made this mistake in my own personal life. I've done this where I have gone all in on a card game. I sold off all my Magic the Gathering and then it didn't work out as well as I wanted it to. Uh, and so then I felt in a bad position. And one of the things I've learned is to just dabble, you know, just pick up a couple boxes, a case or whatever it is, uh, open it up, enjoy it for a while, and then have your ability to trade those cards into something that you want. <laughs> I mean, even between the games, there's people trading Star Wars for sorcery. I see that a lot in the uh, in the sorcery marketplaces. Uh, and so there's these worlds where the it's no longer just Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. These other card games exist, and they exist within this bubble of TCG influence. If you think about the, the niches or niches or whatever the word is, if you think about the niche of card games, there's a bucket of people that fall into card games and they fall into one or the other. And so it's a really cool way to diversify your collecting and your investing and, and whatever. The other side of this is the fun that you can have and the, the refreshing atmosphere that it brings to card games. A lot of people, a lot of the time tell me, man, I'm just bored of Magic the Gathering. I just, I feel like I'm just burnt out. And there's a, a huge um, study that basically says that every three years ago, it was a, the AltaFox study. Remember, if you remember that from uh, two years ago when AltaFox was looking into Magic the Gathering and Hasbro and this kind of stuff, that there's a cycle of about three years for a Magic the Gathering player where they, they chalk out of Magic, they get out of it. And then they come back after another three years. And I think with these alternative games that are popping up, it creates a really interesting atmosphere where you can take a break from Magic the Gathering for a little bit. You can go and play Sorcery or, or One Piece or Star Wars or whatever, and you can enjoy this kind of refreshing new uh, take on a card game to kind of revitalize yourself and eventually you come back, right? Eventually you come back to magic and you, you get back to playing. But that kind of attitude of something fresh and new gives you a new exciting lifestyle uh, to hop into the game. So I think there's another avenue of this that's not just purely collecting and investing, but actually playing and enjoying the hobby from that side. But with that increased risk that we we're talking about also comes an increase in opportunity. You know, the risk and opportunity levels are oftentimes... Uh, can, you know, they're, they're lined up. And so if you look at something like a, a Boba Fett showcase, you know, I, I opened one of those from my boxes or I, I bought one, right? Before I bought one, uh, before I opened one in a case from Star Wars, I actually bought one for $350. I just sold the PSA 10 for $1,700. You know, like you, actually, I didn't even sell it. I traded it for some Pokemon. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, this is what I'm saying. You have this diversity of things that allow and that risk that you take also has an increase in opportunity. Very rarely in Magic the Gathering, collecting and investing, do we see a short jump from something go from $300 to $900 consistently. Very, very rarely does that happen. And now, I'm not saying to put all your eggs in that basket. There's a ton of risk associated with that basket, but that's why you have those huge jumps. Magic the Gathering typically is a, the reserve list and seal product is a slow and steady kind of investment. You're going to see that kind of uh, gradual growth, which is healthy and good. And, and your, a lot of your um, TCG bucket of investment should be in that stuff. But you do want some sort of exposure uh, to the idea of quick jumps and the ability to flip cards and the ability to see significant increase in cards. And that typically is going to be in these indie TCGs or these alternative TCGs of which the market is much smaller. And as the game grows, you have these jumps. So I personally really like um, the idea of dabbling in that without really putting all the eggs in the basket. And I think it's a really healthy opportunity uh, to have some sort of risk exposure to those things. And across the board, if you diversify it enough, if you have an, enough different games that you, again, you got to know them, you got to invest time in them, you got to invest resources of, of time and energy into them and to understanding them. You can't just go buy every card and expect it to work out. You got to become an expert in a lot of ways on this stuff. 
But if you expose yourself to some of it, I think you see some significant gains that you don't see in the, in the uh, magic side. But again, coming back to the first point, I would highly recommend that you find something that you enjoy and that you love rather than just throwing money at a wall uh, and hoping that it sticks. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Tell me actually, tell me what you think about all this. Tell me if you disagree, disagree, but also tell me your best story. What have you traded? Uh, you know, a lot of my, my vintage Pokemon came from trading cards of Indie TCG. I would love to hear the stories uh, that you have in the comment section below. You guys have yourself a fantastic day. Remember we will be live on Friday morning at 9 a.m. for the podcast. So click the link in the comment section uh, to hit the um, I want to be there button. Uh, we'll see you there. Remember to be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.